In the 1950s, the child welfare system decided to stop calling children's homes orphanages. This led to the common misconception in our country that all of the children struggling to live without families simply disappeared. But that couldn't be further from the truth, you see. According to the Children's Bureau, there are over 120,000 children who are orphans. And additionally, there are another 400,000 living without permanent families. Now these children could be in these situations for a variety of reasons. They could have been seized from their guardians by CPS, they could have lost a parent due to death or incarceration, or they could be runaways. And in addition, most of these children suffered from abuse in their original placements and will continue to suffer from abuse either on the streets and even in foster care. Two years ago, when I read about the hardships that children without families face, I felt so helpless. I knew that I wanted to change this. I really wanted to make a difference, but I had no idea where to start, and I felt so hopeless and helpless, and like I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Like, where do you start? But then something amazing happened. A few short weeks later, I was introduced to a woman named Annie McAveney. Mrs. McAveney is the founder of Fill a Heart for Kids. Through the organization, she helps underfunded group homes care for their children and provides resources to homeless kids, such as um, blankets, winter coats, food, and much more. But what makes PhilHeart different from many other organizations is that they also make efforts to help with the children's emotional well-being and healing. You see, many of the children who come into the child welfare system are survivors of abuse most of us couldn't even fathom experiencing. Then, a lot of them are placed into group homes that are state-funded. With the limited funding, they don't have the resources to provide anything more than necessities, such as clothes, food, water, a roof over their head. Now compare and contrast a group home to your home life when you were growing up. Was that all your parents provided you? Did they only give you the bare necessities? They probably provided unconditional love and support. Probably got you new toys, new clothes. You got to celebrate your birthday. Maybe even every once in a while you even got to go out to dinner with your family or go to the movies. These experiences that are probably the foundation of your fondest childhood memories are unheard of in group homes, in rarity. So Phil Hart tries to close the gap that state budget cuts leaves by providing these experiences that other kids get to experience and the kids can't in the homes. But you see, I'd argue that even though we provide things that aren't deemed as necessities by the state, I'd argue that they absolutely are necessities in terms of helping a child grow and develop Take the stuffed animals Philahart provides, for example. I'd like you to turn to your neighbor and hold out your hand with your arm fully extended. And I'd like you to not allow your palms to touch each other. You probably can't even do it in here. Um, that is the distance that a house parent must keep from a child in their care. So the fact that you can't even do it shows that you're breaking CPS code. Um, that's, that's as far as a, parent, a house parent must stay from their child. Now, imagine that you've just had a really, really tough day at school, or you've woken up in the middle of the night from night terrors. Your guardian can't even comfort you with a warm embrace. So the kids that we serve turn to stuffed animals just to have something to hold or cuddle when they feel sad or scared. Or take the birthday parties that Phil Hart provides, for example. Imagine being a kid and not being able to celebrate your birthday party. No songs, no presents, no cake, no one even wishes you a happy birthday. This is a reality that many children in the foster care system and in the child welfare system face, and a reality that Phil Hart tries to combat through Project Birthday. I remember the first birthday party I helped plan. There were balloons lining the patio of the children's home, and there, were, there was tissue paper blowing in the wind like tumbleweeds. But what I remember most from that birthday party was sitting at a picnic table with the birthday girl as we were eating cake. She told me that although she was sad that she couldn't celebrate with her biological siblings, this was one of her best birthdays yet because she got to have chocolate cake for the first time. And as she said that, as a big gleaming smile emerged on her chocolate stained face, I realized that a simple act of kindness, like giving a child a slice of cake, can help them as they juggle with the emotional struggles they're facing. But Looking back, 
I don't think that it was the chocolate cake that cheered her up so much, as it was knowing that there were people who cared enough to celebrate her birthday, celebrate her life with her. People who showed that they cared for her, they loved her, and they wanted her to be happy. That's what I think really cheered her up. And these benefits go both ways. I can tell you that the experiences I've had through this program and the connections I've made have been truly gratifying. In turn, here are some of the thank you notes that our organization receives. As you can see, the kids are really thankful to be receiving things that their homes can't provide, like Halloween candy, a Halloween costume, Easter candy. And these last two, I think, are very thought-provoking and very moving. In this one, he says that we, we're, he's very thankful that we show that we care about him and we're his rock. And then in the other one, she says, thank you for caring for us when everyone else turned their backs. You helped me keep a smile on my face and joy in my heart. So looking back, you can probably conclude that in these past couple of years, I haven't saved any lives. I haven't reformed the child welfare system. But I have done several simple acts of kindness, which in turn have helped children as they heal from the trauma they've faced. These simple acts of humility and kindness have the power to help children grow and develop into healthy, confident adults. Thank you.